so we're what we're 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 six months in into this year and uh i think the market's taken a nosedive interest rates are going up as is inflation of course and so i was thinking it's kind of interesting to kind of retrospect and be like did you and i both miss out on an opportunity of getting a home or was it a blessing i think you actually might have missed out back in 2021 because you looked you were looking early on when i feel like a lot of people were looking and just because the interest rates were so low back then that it made sense even if you were not it wasn't like in your two three four five year plan to buy a house it probably made sense to at least start looking because it made sense but i looked i started looking earlier this year which is probably the worst yeah. time to look because <laughs> <laughs> everything took a no save at that point beginning of the fall right yeah of the market i saw yeah. it right before it got really bad and yeah. I thought it was bad then because I was comparing it to what you were telling me 2021 was like, which 2021 looked amazing compared to what I saw. But now when from I an look, interest rate point of view, from an interest rate clarify. point of view, yeah, let's be clear. We're talking about housing. We're talking about mortgages and interest rates. And from that perspective, definitely 2021 was amazing. A lot of people I know bought houses. A lot of people got yeah. very fortunate with the interest rates that they locked in. But I think... In that sense, yes, I think you might have missed out on 2021 because you were looking back then. But yeah, uh, I don't know. 2022 has been pretty much bad for everyone for the most part. And I don't know if anyone who went to look in 2022 could say they got lucky with any of their interest rates. You know, uh, I think for me personally, I think it was a blessing. Because uh, I think the first thing that we need to establish is that Canada does not offer like a 15 or a 30 year fixed uh, rate for a mortgage, which I think comes across as a surprise to a lot of people in the US. Mm -hmm. All my friends are like, wait, what? You, you don't get a 15 or 30? I'm like, no, the max is five, sometimes a seven. That's about it. So I know people who got uh, mortgages at you know, sub 2% interest rates, uh, which is fantastic. And if you locked it in for five years, you were smart. But then what happens after five years? I mean, people who bought in 2021, uh, 2026 is not around the corner, but when your interest rates go up from 2% to what seems like it's going to end at 7%, it's, the monthly mortgages are insane. I mean, I don't think that it this inflation and these high interest rates will last that long, but it would take away my, it would give me nightmares on a daily basis. Yeah. Just I mean, knowing it's coming. You're throwing out those numbers from a year ago, the 2% yeah. sub 2%, which you're talking about. The Canadian. Yeah. And it was the same thing here. And you look at yeah. the graphs and you see just within six months how much things have changed as far as mortgage rates. And, you know, for a lot of people, it might not even make sense when you look at the percentage rates and you wonder, OK, sure, like it's yeah. a percentage point lower than it was, you know, a year ago or, you know, whatever. It's gone up a percentage point. But when you actually are in the market to buy a house or you're in the market to invest in real estate, you realize that each of those percentage points is this many more hundreds or thousands of dollars out of your pocket every month Absolutely. with the mortgage. Yeah. So, and yeah. that's something I think you and I both, because we went in at different times, we sort of experienced it. We sort of saw what's out there and we got to see the different price points as well, because I saw the interest rates change within months of me looking. I started at a within certain interest weeks. rate. Sure, I remember within weeks, yeah. <laughs> talking to you, it's like, yeah. dude, my 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 realtor is like, get it now because the interest rates are going to go up. And as we're talking, I think the Fed just decided to raise it, and then every two weeks it just kept going up and up and up. And I remember you started at about two percent, and now we're at seven percent. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't hit the two percent because I didn't look in twenty twenty one, but yeah. I was close yeah. to about four. Almost a little. Oh, you were that old. Yeah, I was already okay. at that, and I was saying like, yeah. this is high, because 
I was looking at what you had showed me from the year before and four looked like a really high number because you were looking at two, three percent. But now today, when I look back at that four, that looks great. (laughs) It doesn't look that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Four is what would be considered normal, you know, the, the usual mortgage rates, which, you know, during normal times. But I mean, just to put it into perspective, um, when I started looking, I started looking, I think, uh, December of 20, November of 2020. And by Feb of 2021, I was priced out of the market, at least in Toronto. I'm in Toronto, you're in Canada, you're in Sacramento, California, the US. Um, and as the interest rates kept sinking, house prices just kept escalating and and, i mean toronto is a hot market no matter what but holy shit i mean i'm talking about condos which are not even downtown toronto which are on the outskirts uh you know in the greater toronto area sub 450 square feet selling for over half a million dollars ridiculous i mean especially you're talking to someone who's in california where i've seen I thought I had seen higher prices. Million dollar home, yeah. Right, but then you're talking condos that are less than a thousand square feet going for insane amounts of money, ridiculous amounts of money that can't be, I couldn't justify spending that, but yeah. you know. But I mean, the funny part is, is that when I was looking at a half a million dollar uh, homes, I was looking at like 400,000, 450,000 uh, for a condo. And I was like, this is too much. Like, I, I don't, it doesn't make sense. And I thought I got priced out. And so I moved away from Toronto into a city that's about 100 kilometers north of Toronto called Barrie. And I started looking at homes there. And within a month, what we're selling for 330 started selling for half a million over there. Within a month. They're bigger. They're about 700 square feet. But then it's not even Toronto. It's 100 kilometers away. It's not a bad city. It's just small. Like $700,000, like half a million dollars for that. Right. At that point, I'm like, well, if I'm spending that much here, might as well look at, you know, what's down in Toronto. Yeah. The homes yeah. that I thought were overpriced at half a million were now touching seven fifty. Yeah. I mean, and that's always going to be the case. It's just the timeline within which all that happened. I had never dipped my toes in this housing market before this. No. So it's an insane time for everyone. But at the same, you know, when I when I look back even a year ago, those prices don't look don't look that bad. And uh, you know, maybe yeah, let's. We were going to look at some of the listings that we had looked at. All right. So, just as an example, um, you know, we pulled up a few listings. So this is the one which is actually downtown Toronto, um, on Jarvis Street, and it's selling for right now almost seven hundred fifty thousand dollars Canadian. And I mean, lobby and all is fancy. That's typical Toronto. But keep going, 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 and we're inside. Now, this is a very typical Toronto condo. They all look the same. Uh, They're usually, you know, a a box. (laughs) And it depends. If it's a nice box, then it'll probably have a proper door to your bedroom. And if it's a shitty box, it's probably going to have like a sliding door. That's how I differentiate between condos and Toronto. Is the the type of door that they use? Yeah, because to me, a sliding door is not a door. Are, like, uh, are you? I know. Door? I'm... Do you like barn doors at all? Is that your? Because there's people who fall into one of two camps. Either you love them or you hate them. A barn door, but not for my bedroom. A barn door is fine for your laundry room. A barn door is okay for a barn. A barn door even okay for your pantry. A barn door is not fine for my bedroom. So when you say sliding doors, are you thinking of barn doors for your bedrooms as as one of the disqualifying factors? Who am I? What am I complaining about? Literally, I'm recording in my one room, which is my kitchen, my living room, and my bedroom. So... I know, but the, the 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 day your mortgage company writes you a check and says, you know, go here, this is your what you're approved for. You start thinking in terms of, I don't like that. I want this. I don't want barn doors. I know, in my I know, apartment. but 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 I mean, that's just how it is. Because I think the reason people put in the sliding door, which is kind of quite useless, is because then they can call it a one bedroom, and a one bedroom always has a higher resale value than, say, uh, a bachelor. Right. 
So it's more technicality and w- what goes on paper. Mm-hmm. So in this case, it actually seems like they have like uh, a door door and it has a small balcony and uh, a, what I call a kitchenette, uh, a little island. And that's the entire apartment. And it's it's nice. I think it's a new build. It's probably never stayed in, but $750,000 for that. Do you remember That's, what to me what floor this was on? Like, is that also a factor when it comes to the pricing? Yeah, absolutely. I think the higher you go, the more expensive it's gonna get. Right. So I think uh, this is probably on the thirty seventh floor. Okay, that's pretty high up. I mean, I know Toronto's got a skyline that you know, yeah, most, a lot of yeah, cities yeah. don't have, but yeah, yeah, and and I mean, if we scroll down, if you look at it, it, um, I mean. That's the other thing with buying a condo in Toronto is are the maintenance fees. I mean, for this particular condo, the monthly fees is about three hundred fifty dollars, which is a significant chunk. Yeah. On top of your mortgage. Does that include any amenities as far as a pool or a gym, anything? Like that it sort? does. I mean, but how much of that are you going to actually use, right? I mean, sometimes uh, they will include the heat and the water uh, costs. Not always. You really need to check that. I think the other nice thing about this condo is that they actually do have a parking attached with it, mm-hmm. uh, which, again, is not always the norm with condos here. And to anyone who knows, I mean, parking spots sell for close to 100000 in downtown Toronto. Just a parking spot. A reserved parking spot. That's a like- reserved parking spot. So, yeah. And, and also, I mean, sometimes people, because you live in downtown Toronto, if they do buy a condo that comes to the parking spot and they don't have a car because you don't need one, they rent it out. So that becomes a source of income. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's, it's just, yeah, I guess because I did not grow up in Toronto, or in a big city like Toronto, some of these things are still jarring. I've been here for three years now, but it, it's still, you know, it's just it's just bonkers. Yeah. Uh, similarly, there's another one, I think now I'm looking at the one on 80 John Street. And, you know, nice uh, lobby, whatever. Uh, not that I'm ever going to use it. Uh, this one is nice. Uh, I think it has a pretty nice view. Um, they've set it up pretty nice i've done that effort but you see this one has a sliding door yeah yeah so it, it has that's how they divide it it doesn't have a proper door door it, it has a sliding door and it's i like see that your, yeah. yeah i do like the look a, of this apartment more though than the last one i don't know if that this one feels a little warmer maybe because of the the flooring i think it's here. a flooring the yeah. flooring and i think uh the windows are pretty big the view is nice. And also they've done, I think, I don't know if this is actual setup or it's just digitized. So that definitely makes a difference. The previous mm-hmm. one was more photos, the more authentic how it would actually look in person. Right. So never go by the photos. But if you notice um, if in the previous one, that closet is sad. There's barely any space. And that's pretty much with most condos. Like storage is a big deal. Uh, the bathroom is nice and big. Um, it has an uh, you know in unit uh, washer dryer, pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe that those seem like a luxury, but the view is nice. It's you know it's it's central downtown Toronto. So yeah, yeah, this one is selling for seven thirty, um, which to be honest is considered a fair price. I really like the the balcony space as well just having yeah. that i know like toronto gets cold and that's not something that's available throughout the year but when it is in the summers it, it looks like a nice space especially with the view it is a nice yeah, view it's view almost is... like you're paying for the view at that point when you're paying that much money agreed agreed but you know i'm, I'm gonna kill it for you right now if you scroll down go and look at the maintenance fees is it more than 350 dollars it's five hundred fifty dollars a month, and that's on top of whatever your mortgage, your monthly mortgage, yeah, plus probably insurance unless you go cough up the twenty percent of a down payment. Yeah, there's like, an indoor pool though. I mean, 
Yeah. I know it's it's expensive. I'm just trying to justify whatever these pricings are, but it's hard. You know what? I mean, uh, to most people, that is a justified price. Um, right. And I think what now I'm going to go, we're going to look at another property, which is in another city called Barry. And that's about you know, 90 kilometers north of here. Um, and that is selling for $530,000. Not even in downtown or anywhere near a skyline. This is nowhere near Toronto. This yeah. is this is a two-hour drive from Toronto. I mean, and, you can tell uh, it's not in Toronto just with the the lobby. Because the first two listings we looked at, the lobbies itself looked so fancy. They looked like hotels. Because that's what yeah. you want it to look like if you're in downtown. But um, it's not bad. But if you do look at the... It's not bad, actually. If you uh, go through the pictures here, it, it seems more like a proper apartment. You know, it has a big-ass kitchen. It has uh, a, a proper seating area. It has a nice balcony. Uh it it has a separate laundry room. Okay, so no in it unit. Has a, no, no, no. Dryer. It like it has in unit washer in dryer. In unit, but oh, I it, see. Okay, I see it. But like a that is a room, right? You know, a huge ass uh, bathroom, big balcony. The views not bad at all. Um, but yeah, it's it's nowhere near the city, and uh, but you are paying over half a million dollars for this so and this was not an expensive of... neighborhood before all these listings came out when i started looking at it a lot of these houses were hovering around the 350 to four hundred thousand dollar mark and by the time it went to five hundred thousand i was like no and i'm very happy i made that decision because right now with interest rates gone up so much the idea is that the further away you bought your apartment, further away it was from Toronto, the more the overpriced it was. Toronto might retain its value, but places that are far away from Toronto, it's 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 a bit of a gamble. It would have stressed me out. You know, it's a lot of money for a place that's not exactly a metropolitan like the city um so but 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 this gives you the idea of the the craziness and these are condos if you go into houses those who are selling there there is no way you could buy a house for less than a million dollars it's almost unthinkable in toronto and and this is not even like downtown toronto because there are not that many houses in downtown toronto this is you know if you go slightly east or slightly west uh, these are million dollar homes and now it's like everything's a million dollar home mm -hmm. and i'm not even talking like a house that has a parking spot it doesn't have a parking spot it's not a detached it's a semi-detached which means you are going to be sharing one wall with uh, another house mm -hmm. and that is selling for 1.3 million i know people who spent that money and they're like oh we got it cheap because that people who bought after that they bought those were selling for 1.5 that's always going to be the yeah. case. You know, you start, you, I think a lot of people will keep, will tell themselves that also to feel better knowing that, oh, look at these people paying 2 million for the house that we paid 1.5 for. All right. Okay. So I thought it'd be interesting to just take a look at some of the listings in Sacramento that are comparable as far as being single family homes. Now, one of the listings we actually looked at was in a suburb of Sacramento. This one is listed at around four thirty-five thousand, oh, it's five thirty-five thousand, and yeah. it's a three-bed, two-bath configuration, around twelve sixty square feet. Um, so really nice, nice neighborhood. Yeah, it's like nice landscaping out front. You know, they've maintained it well, clearly. I like, what I really liked about this place also was that they didn't have a lot of grass out front. Because, uh, yeah. you know, trying to maintain grass in California, which California, is so... California, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, water is Dry, not cheap. Yeah. And it's it's it doesn't feel yeah. ethical to do that. Um, the home is... 
I like I really like the layout of the home as far as it being more open. I like that there were like uh they definitely put in the effort to remodel some of the things like the flooring and and uh just make it look a little nicer because it is an older home. This is not a new build. Yeah. Um I love You can tell that from the kitchen. Right. You know, I also love that they had ceiling fans, which is such a small detail, but in a place like California where summers are really hot and you don't want to run yeah. the AC all the time, it's just nice to have that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah uh, kitchen, really nice. I like, it's, uh, I would have loved a little more counter space for that sort of money when you're paying, you know, over 500000 but not bad. Yeah. Again, no appliances included. I don't know if you see that, but there's yeah. no refrigerator yeah and gas, nothing no a lot of these places what they do is they they agree to they'll give you almost like a i don't it's not called a coupon but they'll give you like vouchers for appliances after the sale so okay. they'll say okay you can negotiate that as part of your your selling price you say okay i'll pay five fifty thousand or five forty thousand but you know can you pay for appliances? And they'll be like, okay, here, here's $10,000 you can spend towards appliances. Okay. And, you know, it's just part of the negotiation that they do, uh, especially yeah. when there are no appliances. The one thing I don't understand with a lot of these places in California is this need for a fireplace. <laughs> it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's I right like there. the, I like uh. that it's center stage and it's there, but yeah. I definitely don't, uh, <laughs> I don't see myself using one of these. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, I know one thing that people like to do is um, they'll put candles in there. So instead of having a fire or wood, yeah, you put candles, which is not a bad idea. It's just does Sacramento I, even get that cold? It does. It does. But it's like the equivalent of you know having a nice um, balcony in Toronto. For the most part, you're going to use it for maybe two or three months. So having a fireplace in Sacramento is kind of like that. You might use it for a month or two and it's really yeah. maybe a one or two degrees Celsius. Yeah. But other than that... The fireplace in Toronto would be very nice. Right. Yeah. Which it's it's just funny that it's I see a lot of fireplaces in these places, in the places we looked at. Yeah. Um, again, nice flooring throughout. I like that it was consistent. Um, they clearly repainted. And this layout where they have, you know, kitchen uh, that flows into the living space and it's all yeah. open concept with a sliding door, really common with a lot yeah. of the houses here. Um, the other thing that's really common with most of the listings we saw is they're all, a lot of them are ranch style. So there's no upstairs, downstairs. It's usually just one floor. Yeah, it's just one level. Yeah. Yeah. And compared to a place like Toronto or even in New York, most places yeah, in ca- most places here in California don't have a basement. Basement is not a concept that they have. Yeah, in Toronto, I mean, uh, if a house does not have a basement, it's it's devalued. Right, and I I don't think they even count the the square footage of the basement towards no, they any don't. listings. It's just additional space that is supposed to yeah. be included. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, that was something we had to get used to not seeing was not seeing basements the rooms were on the smaller side for this place not the biggest rooms again not the biggest windows yeah the lighting left a lot to be desired i definitely like the you know having bigger windows more natural light um so overall the space was nice but if you ask at the time you know five hundred thousand plus in this market over here seemed like it was a lot um especially when you're looking at a place that isn't brand new and has had work done to it so you know somewhere down the line the roofing is going to be an issue you're going to have to replace that hvac um is also probably going to need some work done on it um but we just sort of got used to seeing these listings and it's almost like you have to temper down your expectations to match what's out there and start the thing justifying. is if if every neighbor is this way then i mean slim pickings right i mean either you shell out more or you move further away for a new build right or this is all you got and right. and correct me if i'm wrong these were also selling like hot cakes yes the these were also <laughs> listed really high 
but yeah. at the same time they were definitely oddly really really uh In going demand. off the market they were flying off the market way quicker than anyone anticipated yeah. there was a lot of uh bidding wars that happened you know we'd have multiple bids where we'd have almost yeah i want to say 30 30 odd bids for each listing and my it was again i i'd heard that happening in places like toronto where there you know there's limited inventory but then we learned the hard way that that was the case here too there is not there aren't that many homes to be bid on and the ones that are nicer there's definitely going to be bidding wars so but it's like correct me if i'm wrong so the bidding wars and the, the how hot the market was this was i mean you guys were looking what in feb of this year yeah well we started like four looking months ago barely yeah so within the yeah. last <laughs> three or four months but, things have but changed. demand has fallen fallen like quite a bit i mean yeah. uh, homes are not going off the market as fast i mean there's still demand for sure Right. Um, but it's not like, oh, within 48 hours, it's just gone. Right. Which makes sense. There aren't as many players in the market, you know, it, it's not at 7%. turning. No, exactly. <laughs> and it's going from being a seller's market to sort of almost balancing out. Yeah. Where, you know, the ones who are really, uh, uh you know, interested in buying a home are not people who would who just have the money, uh, who would not be able to afford it with these lower, with these insane interest rates. They're just people who, I think a lot of people who stayed on to continue buying homes are people who already had a home. So they had equity somewhere, they're willing to sell it to move into their next home. But the first time homeowners, they were priced out immediately. Like you got, either you have your down payment saved up somewhere, you know, someone, some aunt or uncle or whoever gave you money to spend, or or you're not playing like it's that simple you don't have equity from some other house that you've sold yeah so it's a lot harder to compete then um but with a lot of these places what the other thing that was really important was just having a yard and space for you know the dogs that we have and that was fairly common you have a growing family yeah so yeah good important. nice suburban neighborhood you know this is the price that most of these things were coming at around five hundred thousand. huge yeah it's huge, you know, then you start thinking in terms of maintaining it. Usually a lot of people who start, who move into a place like this, they end up having to hire a landscaping company that come in maybe once or twice a month to help maintain stuff. Because it's it's nice to have a passion where you can go garden, but some things just need extra help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was one of the place. And I picked another place that we looked at that was, again, very similar price point. Similar neighborhood too. I wouldn't even say this is like a nicer neighborhood or anything, but yeah. Okay, it looks nice on the outside. This is listed at four seventy thousand, three bedroom, two bath. Nice Similar tree outside. Footage. Yeah, really yeah. nice yard out front. They've done well maintaining that, and then step back in time. As soon as you step through those doors, it looks like <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like you've gone back at least three decades. But, and it just this how do you bad, not bad. how do you not want to tear that thing apart and do something with it it's like is it even worth trying to renovate this i mean i don't get don't quote me on this and don't come for me i know nothing about renovating a home but this just seems like so much work like right. first thing is i want to break down all the walls because it's so boxy it is this view right here of that hall that that runs right adjacent to the kitchen yes it's <laughs> it's just so i don't know maybe this was the style back then it's so counter to yeah, it the, is yeah the open layout that is you know more popular today is atrocious let's let's talk about the kitchen like what is <laughs> it's not the worst kitchen i've ever seen but when i look at the flooring uh, yeah I don't, what? that's not even tile i think that's linoleum it is it is it's oh. definitely not tile i'm surprised that it looks like they put in new linoleum flooring 10 years ago because it's not dirty enough where you can tell this has been here through the life of this house but it's definitely not brand new this is yeah this is i mean uh, but 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 that's what i was getting to right i mean 
in a place like California, and if you're buying a home like this, you you the the half a million dollars that you're gonna spend is more on the land than the house, because the house right. is shit. Yeah, you live um, in there, build up equity, and then start doing tiny projects. Cause we also saw newer remodels of these older houses. So when yeah. but those were obviously listed at much higher rates. You know, they were smaller. Like a hundred thousand more, I'm assuming. Probably, yeah. Close to 100,000 more. They were not the same square footage, so they tended to be smaller. They might be 3-2, yeah. but then, you know, maybe close to 1,100 square feet. Um, yeah. And they had done up the bathroom. So those are the money makers, right? Your bathroom and your kitchen. You make those look pretty. Yeah, bedroom is usually when you're looking at a new or a listing, it's pretty, it's an empty space unless someone's living there at that point when it's listed. It's an empty space. You can gauge, oh, will my bed fit here? Fine. Yeah. But the bathroom and the kitchen is where stuff starts to shine or not shine. Is you yeah. start noticing the flooring's dirty. You start seeing the cabinets that look like they're falling apart or are so yeah. dated. Um, and those fixes aren't even that expensive. You know, for someone, at least for the cabinets, you come in and put a fresh coat of paint on something. It looks so much better. Like a bright Dude, white paint is enough. I hate to tell you, there's no saving these cabinets. These are probably beyond saving. I don't. This is why this thing's still listed. I'm just surprised at the price at which it's listed. Um, yeah, even the I mean, it's, uh, comparable, right? The so. the bedrooms with the closets, uh, they have these the sliding. Gold trim? Yes, I was just looking at that, and I'm I'm glad your eyes went to that same trim. It's oh. so ugly. Um, I don't think that was ever in style, even whenever this thing was built. It just looks like. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I mean, but I mean, that's the market, right? So, I mean, this is, I mean, yeah, I mean, essentially, you would have to pay a lot uh, just to remodel it. And it is what it is. But I don't know, man. I mean, overall, we've seen uh, these two listings, and I don't know. I, I I honestly do not have regrets about not having bought a home. Um, I don't know. In all fairness, I don't know if I'll ever be able to buy a house in Canada because mm-hmm. all of Canada is just, you know, overpopulated in places that are can be inhabited because of severe weather and uh, prices are just through the roof. But at the same time, I don't, I'm not going to buy it out of FOMO and then not sleep ever thinking how mm-hmm. i'm gonna pay this mortgage but for you it is different i do think that the prices are reasonable given the market that we kind of live in mm-hmm. um i just don't know if this is the right time there's just so much going on yeah um inflation is at a 40-year high um russia is invading ukraine and a lot of threats going on in europe uh, China is on a zero COVID policy where their economy is struggling and is hampering the, you know, the growth for almost across the globe. Uh, there's just a lot going on, and it's just so hard to kind of predict which way the market is going to sway. And I know people say be brave when the market is shitty, but I am not. Uh, I'm not somebody who has a financial cushion to be able to weather a blunder. Mm-hmm. It's not. You know, I have a small amount of money, which is my down payment, and that's it. Right. Which right. It... also, just to say, a down payment in Toronto is like for a house is like close to two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, so. it's not a small amount of money. It's a lot of no. money <laughs> for most it's people. It's a lot of money. That's um, why a house is out of the question. It's a condo for me. You were yeah. saying. No, I, I just wanted to piggyback off the down payment thing that he just brought up, which I think that's the probably the one of the good things that happened through this experience was the main thing being actually getting out there, getting your feet wet, seeing honestly what the process looks like, losing a few bids. We did we did lose a few bids as far as putting our, you know, putting our name out there, trying to get, you know, trying to get in. Uh, as far as reasonably priced listings go, but then just learning that sometimes you can't compete with the prices people are willing to pay. Um, But the down payment part that I wanted to talk about was even just having my assets 
liquidated so that I could bring the down payment to the table, you know, because you have to show that you have the assets available. Right. It actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise looking at the market today. Cause, because, yeah, that's when the market also started to fall pretty harshly. So, yeah. no, I mean, that way it worked out. But now that you have the liquid, are you got, what do you do? Do you just sit on it and, you know, let inflation ruin its value? Or do you put it invested back in the market and hope it'll go up in two months or three years or five years? Right. Or, like, what do you do with your money, right? Because it's like just leaving it staying in cash also seems to not be an option. Mm -hmm. I'll tell so, you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to buy a house in the next few months. <laughs> <laughs> Fair but, enough. Yeah, no. Uh, me neither. Yeah, the, I think a house is, uh, for me, um, not an option either, given the interest rates. It's just not possible. Yeah, not that desperate yet. But, uh, yeah. Well, I guess... Uh, to each their own um at least for us that seems to be the most sensible decision right i can live with that yeah. okay well this is fun i love looking at homes that i can never afford i think most people uh, that's what draws you in and then you either you either get sucked into the point where you regret it or you know all the lucky few in 2021 who got the decent interest rates are are happy good for them yeah Cool. All right. 